you know, some of these slides uh, are. Um, That's a spam one. That's right. You know, uh, <laughs> you know the is it the Hormel company apparently has these promotional items and that that's uh, where we picked that up. Now there is a company with the initial AMI, and I thought of writing them to see if they had some promotional items and we could uh, we could pick them up and use them possibly. Get a can of Bon Am and take off the deal. There, that's right. <laughs> see, there's already ideas coming from the. Sharpen up those meters. Did anything change it? Uh, so who is this, Dale? This is uh, Eric WB4 VVI in uh, in Pilot, Virginia, and he's been very active. He wasn't so active uh, in the last couple of years. I think he had some eye problems, but he's been very active over the winter. In fact, I remember when we had the, the blizzard. He uh, was looking at several days without anybody coming up his road because he got a lot of snow. But he's taken his this CCA transmitter, which I apparently he got brand new. He was given this thing, and he's uh, put some uh, a variable uh, tank circuit components in it, and he's got the thing tuned all, all the way up to 40 meters and uh, 160, and he does very well with it. You can see he's got some nice. Um, hello. That? Yeah. Somehow something's still Turn it upside down. We're going to, uh... BB3H, you said who will be here. But he's the interim Northeast Region Director, and he passed along to me his objectives in his division. And the first one of three main objectives is to learn the desires, goals, plans, and hopes of the membership for AMI. And on behalf of Steve, he says, I invite all joining in the Northeast Region to express their thoughts to me so that together we will make an AMI that serves the membership. The second main objective is to work to increase the number of frequencies used, especially on 75 and on 40 meters. And his rationale is that the increased amount of AM operations has made the traditional AM frequencies more crowded. Typically, as two or more people settle near one another, the congestion goes up and the enjoyment goes down. That. Steve is proposing the establishment of new and alternate frequencies. His third main goal is to recruit more to the ranks of AMers and to the hobby. Now, younger hams and non-hams, as well as women hams and non-hams, have traditionally been underrepresented in the AM community. Steve thinks the new blood will not only increase our numbers, but will broaden our appeal to other potential recruits. And Steve is looking for other suggestions from those in the Northeast region, which swings as far south as Maryland, up into New England, the strongholds of New York, uh, Maine, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts, other states in the New England region. Write to Steve or give him a call with the electric radio address. The survivor. Okay. See, whenever you cross from the audio realm into the video realm, there are problems. Well, we had blown modulation crash one with two. It's all that very modulation. Hey, can we uh, switch back into the slides? Yes. Great. Thank you. Thank you for that prepared statement. <laughs> it came just in time. Okay, picking up where we were, this is um, this is Eric's Eric's station. He's got a nice Ranger there, and uh, he's got a little uh, mixer board and some other CCA stuff. It's very nice, uh, clean. And here he is proudly, uh, uh, see the way this uh, thing is tilted, it makes him look about eight foot tall. <laughs> these transmitters, broadcast transmitters, are out there. They're in the, in the, the way to find them is, uh, I guess what is it, every other week Radio World has a classified in it. 
And also, if you've got local radio stations, it's amazing. Some station managers clean out junk, they get all the dump that they, they, they don't need. It. Other ones, pack rats. And that could be a gold mine for you. Anybody know this character? Uh, Hank, <laughs> Hank, describe what this is on this. Is it Collins? I'm here. Hey, Vern. Yeah. Uh, when you talk about broadcast transmitters, now, your transmitter is homebrew, right, Vern? Yes, that's correct. But you're a broadcaster. Yes, bulletin service, uh huh. Right, and on the short, on the uh, amateur bands, and so it wouldn't be right if we didn't have Vern in Wentzville, Missouri, and this is his uh, uh, station console. Does it look still somewhat like that? Pretty much, yes. I've moved it, but it's the same transmitter. We're using some other auxiliary uh, processors and all that with it. Right now, processing. What was the final in this? Uh, we're using a 4400C, single 4400C. Modulated by? All right, 572 beats <coughs> a pair. Great. And it runs about 350 out. 350 into the antenna. So it's a nice job in the, in the doghouse there uh, with all that plumbing, see? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, I didn't put a, a photo in of your uh, antenna system, but it, is it about 110 foot? It's 110 foot vertical. Right, and, it, and how much uh, copper did you have in the ground? Uh, a little better than 17,000 feet. There's 120 quarter wave radials, same as what Don's using. You can do the same, see? Okay, this is uh, uh, my, my brother KK1K is here today. It's a DTA 50M. And foolishly, when I took this picture, I looked at it straight on, and that highly polished wax surface, the flash bulb was right on the RCA symbol, see? And it looks like. Uh, we had a meltdown there on the uh, 813. But that's two 813s modulated by two 813s, and it's seven feet tall. You need a utility stepladder to check it out. <laughs> man, oh man, they all look tall. This is uh, my Collins 300G, and it's uh, two 810s modulated by two 810s. And uh, for those of you that read the article about uh, this, I guess it was the tail of the uh, three tra tail of two transmitters. This is where the it stopped a bullet. It went through the hole uh, uh, down in the Trumbull, Connecticut, the, the door of the station. It's a great, uh, great transmitter. 
I don't think. <laughs> Not my station though. This uh, it, it is probably, a, I mean, it's a short wave. I'm not sure any of broadcaster is, but it, uh, I had to put it in. This is an FRT-15. It's in my station. It's 241,000s modulated by 241,000s, early 50s. And uh, this is when the QRM gets bad. <laughs> and this is um, the General Electric XT-1, which was also featured in that electric radio article. And the A33s, as you can see, are all fired up there. I finally put a switch in the house so I can power this up in the winter from inside the house. I don't have to go out there in my pajamas early in the morning to talk to the guys in 1888. Uh, this is uh, too big. It's four foot wide, six foot high. I can go through any doors uh, to get into my house. And uh, so I haven't modified the house. I just run it remote on the garage. Yeah. Almost needed. This is uh, Otis, P5SWK. Now, again, I think it's homebrew stuff, but he uh, has um, uh, a, uh, a setup that looks enough like a, I, that's, I just got one of Otis in there, a broadcast studio that we uh, included Otis, and he's on from uh, Houston, and you hear him uh, uh, often down there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> And last year, if you were here, you remember Sam, W6HDU shack, these are some photos. This is, this is his 160 meter location. Uh, he's got the uh, navigator for a driver and some audio gear on the, the left and the AR-88 on the right. I think that's the AR-88. And he uses uh, this uh, EPA uh, 250 RCA, a little bit different vintage than the, uh, the ones the EPA 250M that we're looking at. Uh, it's got an interesting look, almost like the Collins with the chrome strips and the uh, meters there. This uh, shows how the uh, circuitry is laid out in that, and uh, it has two 810s. Uh, I guess uh, they are uh, 814s. Wh which it, I guess the 814s is the modulator, aren't they? You see that? Okay. And he has a, uh, a Collins uh, with two 833s, modulated by two 833s. While I was out there, I noticed he had the missing meter, and I had a, a, a case that uh, matched that style, sent it out to him. I guess that may be a base current uh, monitor meter. I didn't have that exact meter, but we can plug that hole up since. And this has a very nice couple of mini doors so you can look in on the tubes. You see in there, they're real potent. Uh, yeah, this is those radio frequency line cards. Uh, he also has some uh, old style uh, uh, linear uh, amplifier. These are, this is a Western Electric that used uh, I think it's six two uh, elevens modulated by yeah either one. And uh, it's, yeah, apparently in the flash, I, I can't remember the blue standing out like this, but look at how beautiful this rig was, and he's quite uh, uh, struck with the round, the round metering and uh, just the workmanship and the styling of this transmitter. And there it is, the whole front opened up. Sharpen that up, isn't that something? Beautiful stuff. Now, he, at, when I was out there, and some of you again have seen this, it's, uh, uh, he got a, a large West Electric a kilowatt, and this was a cabinet that came off the, the truck and we put it in the story, uh, storeroom, and apparently someone, the designer of this cabinet was the same designer as some locomotive that was a uh, fancy looking locomotive uh, uh, on the uh, railroads out west. But, uh, look at this, now he hadn't cleaned it up as of yet, but look at those round meters, and they're about uh, seven to eight inches round. <laughs> and uh, there's some, uh, you know, some heat, some use has gone by, but he's, he'll have that all cleaned up beautifully, I'm sure. Now this is uh, Pat's K7YIR's station. It's an FRT24, which is 141,000 modulated by two four four hundreds, and uh, no, not strictly, it's certainly not a, a broadcast transmitter, it may have been used uh, in shortwave uh, broadcast service, but it's probably more uh, uh, commercial or uh, military uh, service. Now, he included some slides of uh, when he got it. It's pretty uh, scruffy. You can, you can focus in on the top and focus in on the bottom. See, it's pretty uh, scruffy. And he started the uh, 
work on uh, on that. It shows the RF compartment. I've got a couple. You can see there's a, probably a plate current. Maybe that's RF amps. I can't tell. Well, maybe it's RF amps there. We just about read it. I've never had it blown up this far before. But the uh, nice thing about this is double. You see this double shielding. You know, they close that up and it goes in the cabinet. My FRT uh, 15 is not double shielded. And you can ask my neighbors about that. <laughs> confirm that. And this is the uh, the RF compartment. Now this is Rod, WA7AMI, and he's got a Gates uh, kilowatt there, I think it's a kilowatt, I might uh, be wrong on that, and a Bauer BC1. That's quite an attractive one, and look at the size of those uh, square meters on the top. I think I have a 